almost exactly two years ago, on November the 24th of 2011, a friend and I made our way to the front line of an iconic battle between us, the revolution, and Egyptian security forces. Egyptian riot police beat me and broke my left arm and my right hand, and they sexually assaulted me, and I was detained for 12 hours, including six hours with military intelligence, during which I was interrogated blindfolded. After I was released, both of my arms were in a cast for three months. Now, as a writer, I used my 10 fingers. I couldn't. I could just use one finger for Twitter, because I live on Twitter. But then I realized if I don't have my fingers to write, what do I have? Because usually words were my message. I realized after I was attacked that my body became my canvas. And so I determined that when my arms were still in a cast, that I would celebrate the healing of my bones, because the healing of my heart would take much longer. But I would celebrate the healing of my bones by getting tattoos. And so my first tattoo was of the ancient Egyptian goddess Sekhmet. And I found her or rather she found me, in a museum in Turin, in Italy, where I was on a, a small tour, and the director of the museum said, there are 19 statues of Sekhmet in this room. She's the ancient Egyptian goddess of retribution and sex. And I thought, ooh, I like both of those. I want both. <laughs> because she's, she essentially, she will kick your ass and then fuck your brains out. And I said, OK, she's my kind of woman. <laughs> Now, Sekhmet isn't just this great symbol of fierceness and ferocity, but she also represents a dark side to femininity that we've often been denied, and cultures that have goddesses allow this dark side. And not just a dark side, but also a motherly side, because a lot of young boys who entered this iconic battle where I was beaten would write their mother's phone number on their forearms so that if they died and were taken to the morgue, they could call their mothers. So Sekhmet is my mother. Now, she travels with me between Egypt and the United States. I've been living in the United States for the past 12 years, but I recently moved back to Cairo. And what I do when I travel back and forth between these two cultures that are now mine, and I do this with the help of Sekhmet, is I use her ferocity, and I use that retribution side of Sekhmet with a bit of sex on the top to connect the obsession of the religious right in my country of birth and in my new country. Because this is essentially what is behind the horrific tales of sexual violence that you hear about, that are trying to push Egyptian women who are instrumental to our revolution out of the street. But it's also that religious right wing that is trying to deny women in the United States our reproductive rights. And I connect the men of the right wing from both sides of my backgrounds by saying they're obsessed with our vaginas. And my message to them is stay out of my vagina unless I want you in there. <laughs> and so what you see, how women are fighting back and how Sekhmet helps me to fight back is that we speak when we're not supposed to speak. There's a lot of shame associated with sexual violence, especially in my country of birth. And so myself and many other women who have survived sexual violence, we speak because we say there is no shame in what happened to us. The shame lies in the men who attacked us. And so we speak. And in the United States, women speak. Thank you. In the United States, we speak to say you will not roll back our hard-fought-for and hard-earned rights to control our reproduction, to control our bodies. And so we take out of Congress men who say things like, if a woman is legitimately raped, legitimately raped, her body will shut down a pregnancy. What kind of school did this moron attend? And so Sekhmet travels back and forth with me because we need that ferocity. And in Egypt recently, a 19-year-old graphic designer called Dina Mohammed was so frustrated with the sexual violence and the desire to shut women up about the sexual violence that she created a comic hero called Kahira. Now, Kahira is the Arabic word for the capital of Egypt, Cairo, but it also means the victorious one. She reminds me of Sekhmet. Now, Kahira wears a long black veil, and whenever she sees women in the comic book being assaulted and the police do not help them, now remember, sometimes the police are the ones attacking us, Kahira sweeps in and she beats them up. She kicks their ass. And she tells the woman, 
who's trying to fight back against the sexual violence, I will get you justice. This is the retribution that Sehmet promises. But it's not just about speaking about the miserable side, the side that needs justice, the side that is assaulted. It's also a desire to speak about sex as something pleasurable and sex as something desirable. This is the sex side of Sehmet who's going to fuck your brains out. And we need to do this in my culture because there's, again, a lot of shame associated with sex and wanting sex. And so now, alongside Kahira, you have another woman who is in a comic book designed by a Tunisian artist called Jihan Ben Mahmoud, and she's created a character called Elisa Haddad. Elisa Haddad is often portrayed as nude and in erotic scenes because the artist who created her said, I want her to be sexual, to claim her sexuality. Now, that is a really important point to how we're going to save our revolution. Sekhmet was stopped from destroying humanity because she was on a rampage to avenge her father. She was stopped from destroying humanity when her father spoke to the priestesses and said, you must do something. And so they made a concoction out of opium and pomegranate, and so it looked like blood. And they spilt it along the path that Sekhmet was going to walk on and said, Sekhmet, Sekhmet, you've killed everybody. Look at all this blood. You can stop now. So she drank all of this and became you know, drunk and intoxicated, and everybody had an orgy. Now, I wish we could have an orgy as a solution to our revolution, but we're not there yet. So what we need to do is to, to claim that again by taking the political revolution that we started in the streets, the political revolution that removed Hosni Mubarak, taking it into our homes through a social and a sexual revolution that removes the Mubarak from our mind and the Mubarak from our bedroom. And we connect those two because without that social and sexual revolution, the political revolution will fail. We'll just keep replacing Mubarak with another form of Mubarak, which is what Egypt is struggling with now. And so this other tattoo now, which basically is the name of the street where I was attacked and the Arabic word for freedom. And the Arabic word for freedom because we were liberated in the street. And the artist who created this for me is a man. This was created by an American artist called Molly Crabapple. This was created by an Egyptian male artist called Mohanad Ghandour. Mohanad's name on Twitter is Pyro Visky because he's a master Molotov cocktail maker. <laughs> and he's very proud of that. But he's also an artist. And he recognizes the need for this social and sexual revolution, so he's an important ally. And I use that word ally deliberately because Egyptian women and men have to work together to make the social sexual revolution work. Because when we take the revolution to the home, we stand up to the patriarch, who is the father, but we also stand up to the brother, to the husband, to the son, and make them recognize that in order to achieve the goals of our revolution, which will bread liberty and social justice, women must be involved. You cannot have bread or liberty or social justice while half our society is oppressed. And so this tattoo now reminds me of this social and sexual revolution. And these are the two sides of Sehmet. And the Sufi poet Rumi has a wonderful saying that is, the wound is where the light enters. And I have a scar here on my arm because I had surgery to fix the bone which broke like this. And I have a titanium plate. Now I'm very proud of the scar, which you often can't see, but I'm very proud of it and I will never cover it up. But I did not choose the scar. The scar was a result of the attack and so many other women, Egyptian women, were attacked. Twelve women were attacked on the same street as I was, but they've not been able to speak. But I do choose these tattoos. These are marks that I choose to say, my body is mine, I reclaim my body, I reclaim power over my body, and I will not be silenced. But I also say that I'm opening up myself to the light that Rumi said enters through the wound. And we have many wounds in the Middle East and North Africa. 60 years of military rule in Egypt, often supported by your governments and the US administration. So all our wounds are now potential entry points for the light. And when we let the light enter, especially into our heart, that's the main healing that we need. And that's how our revolution will succeed. Thank you.